Church, amen. amen. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. Inclusive of verse 31. Starts off rather interesting. Because it is uh, our Lord, our Jehovah God, who says something that is rather shocking. He starts off by saying, And I sought a man among them. And that was interesting to me because here is God of the universe who makes a point that he's looking for men. And when I relate to this verse, I wonder would he have found them in the collegiate halls of America today, where it is surmised through research that 64.8% of all degrees that are awarded or given to women we have found a man evangelistically today. When women outnumber men in church, um, of whatever church one may be attending, almost three to one. Even if you look around right now, the reports and research show that for every one male, there will be at least three to four females. Uh, more interesting than that, because we seem to have forgotten God's plan from the beginning of time. And every time that we have our 100 man day uh, Sunday, which will be the first Sunday of each month, uh, we're going to, to look at what God said to man in particular. Uh, when we look at what research says, uh, that if a child is the leader of the family to church, that there is a 15 or 12% chance, rather, that the entire family will eventually come to church through a child. More astonishing than that, where we know statistically, and you can just look around here now, where women outnumber us three to one, uh, if the woman is the leader in the house spiritually, research says, and all the time she is, uh, 15% of the time, eventually, the entire family will come to church. Interesting. More of that research concludes that if there is a male in the house, a man in the house, and a female who believe differently religiously, because of the various and lack of congruency spiritually, that oftentimes in the family it would create a split in which one may become from either agnostic, atheism, atheism, or choose one of the different faiths within the house. Meaning that in the house there could be anything for a person who does not believe in God at all, a person who believes that any, any church will do, to a person who actually follows or goes to church because mama or daddy goes to that church 15 to 20 percent of the time. This is a conclusive response through over 12 to 15 years of research when man is not what man is supposed to be. Uh, then it says that when a man leads spiritually in the house, According to research. And according to the divine word of God, starting from Genesis into Joshua, Joshua 24 and verse 15, where, where he said that, that, that as for me and my house, we will do what? Serve, Serve the Lord. When a man leaves the house, according to 1 first Peter, first Peter 5 and verse 8, if a man does not know how to, how to uh, uh, govern his own house, or how can he govern the house of God? When a man leaves the house, research says, and God's word says that 90% of the time, the whole family will come to church. Lord, we need men to return to the house of God so that 90% of the time, folk will come and follow uh, into the house of God and receive God's word. Y'all ought to say amen. Uh, it is not by happenstance, it is not by accident that the men in the church. And it is not by mistake at all that folk don't see men like God see men, but it was God's design plan that the man stand up and be the spiritual leader in the house. Amen. And because men are not 
like what they're supposed to be. God says that I sought out a man, man. among them. Yes. I didn't seek out a little David in this battle. I want you to look at the text very quickly. Because he just went too I didn't seek out a little David in this battle. I'm not seeking out women in this battle. In this spiritual war in which the, the Babylonians are about to besiege the children of Israel, in this battle where they're about to go into bondage, he says, I don't need uh, the others. I need a man. I need men to stand up. Why? Because there has been a breach in the house of Israel. Breach. I need them to make a hedge. I need someone because it's the man that sold, not the woman, that you ought to love your wife, be willing to die for your wife as Christ died for the church. God intends for the man, if necessary, to lay his life down for the standards that God has put in place. But the problem is that it's not he don't have a man. He said, I'm looking for a certain type of man among the people that will make up the head. Y'all ought to say amen. And right now, right now, some of y'all looking around, looking funny because we don't want to hear this man preaching up in here. But I'm telling you, it's called the turmoil. And I understand, I understand. But you know what, man, we have to realize that standing, making up the hedge is our responsibility, and folk are not going to like it. But we are who God says we are. Amen. We may not be perfect. We may not have it all together. But God says you make up the hedge. Isn't it interesting that husband literally needs to bend the hedges around? When you annihilate the man, he allows himself to be out of position. It causes a breach, not only in your family, but in the house of God. Amen. And whether folk like it or not, when there's a breach inside the house, folk things can get inside the house that was never supposed to get in the house in the first place. Uh, it, it forces the woman to stand in places that she was never meant to sin. It, it forces her to carry loads that she was not meant to carry. She's not able to nurture and bring about the admonition of the children like she was able to. She's not able to go out and help you pay the bills because she's so busy trying to do the plumbing, which you should have the sense enough to know how to do in the first place, but you're out of position. I'm about to say amen. And, and, it's not, and, and folk are out of place not because they want to be out of place. Sometimes women have to lead in church because you won't lead in the first place. Half of you won't even sing, Lord, I want a brand new message. So now look at me, you call me singing. Lord, I want a <laughs> Women have to sing bass because men want bass in the house of God. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and that's good that, that some women are more men than some want to men. I want you to hear this, brother. I want you to hear this real good while you're out there. And you, because we're supposed to be in, in here. He does not care how much everybody else step up. Your responsibility is to make up the hedge. He does not care that she makes $90,000 and you make twenty. you are supposed to be Financially leaving that house, led by the Spirit of God. Amen. It, it, you, you might be smiling right now. Oh, well, my wife is a nurse, but you, but you still better, you better take care of your responsibility the best that you can. Yeah. Yeah. Watch the text. You gotta go back to the text. Yeah. He said, I, "I saw the men where among them I see men. Somebody help me. Yeah. I, I can see some men in the church." There's already a shortage of men in the church. Amen. But then, I'm looking amongst the shortage of men in the church to step up. And they they not stepping up. They want all the blessings. And the enemy is creeping into the house of God. Creeping into the children of God. Slaughtering our children. Slaughtering our core value system. To pray, changing people's belief system uh, concerning homosexuality, changing this, changing that, and the man is standing there saying, Mom's the word, and not doing anything. 
concerning laws that brought a breach into our spiritual cultural value. Y'all looking at me funny right now. Where was the big time preachers when laws were passed that assaulted the men's role in the house? Where were they when they said one man is as good as another man that can get married? Where were the men in the kingdom of God? They, well, you know, I, I don't say that they did to you, they're doing it to me now, but we don't, they, don't, they don't say something up in here this morning. We're going to say it here, we're going to say it to the, to the other church in here. Amen. Or we can go home, we can go home. How y'all want to do it? Amen. I, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to speak to three people for the Holy Ghost, and we can, we, can, we can get through this lesson. Amen. Y'all all right? The breach in the text means that something foreign has penetrated what was supposed to be the barrier or the protection wall for the children of Israel. And then he says something, I want you to hear this. He says something that's powerful. He says, and to make up the what? The hedge and the sand and where? In the gap. Now watch this. When the man is not in position, there's not only the spiritual gap in which we can look theologically at the distance that sin puts between man and God. And only Christ can fill that gap. But then there's also a gap in the blessings in which God is going to deliver once the gap is filled. The gap has to be filled according to what God is looking for. The Bible says in the text that I need somebody to stand in the gap. In Ezekiel 13, verse number 5, Ezekiel warned them that they had not stood in the gap, nor had they provided protection for the family. And that the wicked day is coming, that day is coming, that day in which God is on one side and man is on the other side. The person that stands in the gap has to be sure enough ready to withstand what's going to happen when you stand between a God that's unhappy with mankind and a people who don't want to serve God like they need to serve God. Are you listening to me? Too long we have read this text and we've done a disjustice to the text because when you say you are a man willing to stand in the gap, it means that you're going to stand before God on one side and proclaim a mercy and grace for the people behind you while the people behind are trying to break your neck. Man, that was too heavy for me. That was too much for me. Number one, he has to be a man because God so decreed for him to be a man. He listen to the text. The text says, because, because as much as folk hate men, as uh, much as folk have denied manhood, as much, they have turned even our women against men. Most women say, I don't need a man right now. God said, I'm seeking a man. But I heard women say they, 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 they expanded their, their viewpoint, but I can do bad all by myself, that I don't need no man. I don't need no man. See, the problem is that since the man has left his spiritual position, he now takes on a disposition that God never gave him. God never considered manhood being the boss of a woman, but manhood is based on the spiritual leadership he's supposed to possess and his status as the man of God. Look at the Bible in the book of John chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, verse 14, the Bible says, and the word became flesh and it dwelt among us, and we, 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 we what beheld his glory. Somebody that can cause people to fill their hot cars up and come to the house of God. 
who are most who's not so wrapped up in trying to get this and keep up with the Joneses that they spend their time elevating the kingdom of God. Somebody does not mix up in gossip and nonsense when they're looking around and can't find anybody they baptized year after year. Just one man can impact this world, and that man was Jesus Christ. Impact the world just took one man. All right. You remember some of our great men who've done great works, who stood in the gap. Y'all remember old Noah. Noah had his problems, had his issues. But when we look through the angles of time in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, round the, round the 11th verse or so, the Bible said that Noah walked with God. How did he stand? He stood in the gap. How did he stand on the gap? He had a God telling him. Get ready, for all flesh has come before me. And I repent that I even made man because of the thoughts of evil. But on the other side, he had men that were denying him, saying that God ain't told you nothing. But it stood in the camp. Life on one side and death on the other. Hatred on one side and hindrance on the other. But he stood up as a man with all his flaws, any of those sequences and faults, and said, I want to tell y'all something. Stop! 
house. But it's a man that has the spiritual withal to understand that he's going to have to be a strong man to stand up in front of some rough people. Y'all all right? Uh, because remember, where is the cap? On what side of the man is what? Life. Oh, uh, okay, we can make a home. I'll give this home. I don't have to, I'll prove another point. I'll just give all that point. So on one side of the man is what? Life. Life. And on the other side is what? Death. Death. All right. All right. All right. So they, it's okay. So, 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 so the man he's looking for is not just a man in a nice suit. It's not, it's not, it's not just a man who knows the scriptures. Amen. It's not just a man who just comes to church. Uh, but it's a man who can stand before, who, who, who will stand before God. And all of his flaws and his weakness that impress God in such a way that when he looks behind him, he has no support whatsoever. And while he's trying to save folk, folk are steady doing things to get themselves in trouble. And so he's looking for a man that has the character and the strength to stand before him. Listen to the questions that he asks in Psalms 94 and verse number 16. He says, who will rise up for us? Now this is through God's word. Who will rise? You can read it for me once. I want y'all to see this. Because God's looking for a man who will rise up before the who? The evil to us. Now I'm going to tell you something right here. Now Paul's a station identification. If you want me a preacher, you got to understand God is watching over your shoulder concerning the authenticity of what you're preaching. And men are sitting in front of you waiting you to make a mistake about what you're preaching. Right. Nevertheless, you got to preach and preach anyway. Y'all still in it. So the second part of the question, well, who will stand? What do you mean stand uh -huh, for us? In other words, who will stand and represent God? Uh -huh, why? Because not only are there evildoers, but there are workers of iniquity. It means that while you're trying to stand for God and help save for lives, the very life that you're trying to save is trying to kill you in your process of trying to help them. I'm talking to folk who are praying for their enemy right now because their enemy is more in trouble with God than they are with you. Y'all still not listening to me. I'm talking about to my military folk praying for the war to come to an end so less souls die while the enemy is firing bombs trying to take you out. But you keep praying anyhow. You still not listening to me. I'm talking about when you're trying to help somebody that says stabbing you in your back Oh yeah, these churches, they have 65 over here, 
Christ. I'm looking for somebody that said that I see that there's been a breach. And I see that it's bleeding slowly. And I've decided to personally take a stand within this church and this community and make a difference right here at this place because I see the need. And I know that while I'm doing it, folk are going to understand it. But God showed up. We're loving. I've found a man right now that's sitting here right now that can rise above competition and idiosyncrasies. I may not have a life so and so, but we both on the same team. Let do the will of God. I have a soul to save. I have a soul to lose. And I can put some work in right here and work out my own soul salvation. I'm talking about folks that not sitting around wondering, but what he wearing, what he doing, that's a boy and that's childish. Being a man is not competing against one another. 